Hi, Create with Kelly Crew peeps. Hope we've got several of you tuning in. Sorry, I'm a little bit late having, I'm um, trying to show you so many things today <laughs> that I couldn't get it all together. So we will show you what I can. I'm not sure if we'll get a full card made or if I'll just show you several alternatives. But today we're gonna to be working with the December Paper Pumpkin Kit called Lots of Pun. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Kelly Pitts, Stampin' Up! Independent Demonstrator here in Lubbock, Texas. But I can have customers that I can serve all over the U.S. So that's awesome. Hello, Eileen. Glad you've tuned in. I'm kind of waiting for to see if a couple more tune in, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the Paper Pumpkin Kit from this last month, December, the lots of pun one. I did a Zoom meeting, but several people missed the Zoom meeting the, who are my subscribers. So I thought I would just give you all a sneak peek today because celebration is going on right now, which means for every $50 you spend, either in the mini catalog or Stampin' Up's annual catalog, you'll get a free item out of celebration. Hi, Susan. Glad you've tuned in also. And while celebration is going on is always the best time to sign up for Paper Pumpkin, which if some of you are not familiar, that's our monthly subscription craft kit. And it's a surprise each month when you get something in the mail and you get to make a little kit and it has everything you need to make that kit. But also for my subscribers, I try to do some alternatives so I can show you how to stretch your kit and use the stamp sets for other things or kind of switch things up, use the envelopes instead of designer series paper, use the inside of the envelopes, that kind of tip. So I have several from this last month's kit and I would love to help y'all. If anybody out there is interested in subscribing to Paper Pumpkin, just let me know. But I am, just give me a minute here and I'll get set up on my, um, iPad so I can see comments there before when I turn my camera down. So y'all just talk amongst yourselves, Susan and Eileen, and anybody who's <laughs> tuning in. Let me get this going here. There we go. It just takes a sec. You just can't do it until you're live. So hopefully everybody realizes that and gives us a little grace period there okay i've got it on my ipad now i'm gonna make sure i've got it on my computer make sure the volume's down first so y'all don't hear an echo hope y'all are doing great today and ready to see some fun exciting alternatives for paper pumpkin even if you don't have this kit you might get inspired to buy a layout or buy something that's similar to a kit or a stamp set or die set or whatever that you do have so let's see still not not there yet here on my computer i like to have a backup so let me go in a different way see if we can get it to pull up there we go okay let's put it full screen so i can see there we go okay i've got comments in both places Thanks, Susan, again, again, Susan and Eileen for tuning in. And I will turn the camera down and I'm going to go through and show you some of the alternatives and kind of talk about what I, how I did those. And then we'll, if we have time to make one, to actually make a full card, we will do that. Let me, my light just changed. Okay, hopefully you can see there. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera down. Sorry, I guess we, I don't know if we lost Eileen or lost Susan, can't tell. But hopefully y'all will be back. I'll turn the camera down real quick. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to respond to my fingertips. There we go. Hopefully that's correct. We shall see. Let's see if we can see the postcode properly. 
Yay! It worked. Hoorah. Okay. Now, let's show you. This is the paper pumpkin kit. For those of you who aren't familiar, this is the little box that it comes in. Sometimes it's a little bit different box, but it is such a delight to get. It's like getting a Christmas present or a birthday present every month when you open up your kit. And each month it has the full instructions to make what you, what they suggest that you make. And it has full color instructions and step-by-step. -step. I just don't usually follow those. Some of them I, I may. I'm probably going to go ahead and make one this way with this, but I'll show you all the options that I've done. Let's see, my camera looks like it needs to be scooted over a little bit so y'all can see a little bit more space. Maybe a little bit up. Forgive me, but I'm trying to get, get y'all more room. Did that help? Hopefully. That'll give you a little bit more room left to right. Okay, we will get started and I'll kind of explain what I did on each card. The, one of these, let's see, where are we gonna start? I think we'll just start with this one. All right, we have, and I just did a Zoom meeting <laughs> uh, yesterday, I guess, with these, yesterday or day before, and I had to turn everything around because the camera doesn't flip. So <laughs> now I'm back to back to facing toward me, which is awesome. Okay, this one I was hoping to make kind of like, uh, if you can't tell, this is made with, I'll get it up a little closer, the stitch rectangle die. I cut out the inside of one of the striped envelopes that's in the kit. Let me go a little further, whoops. Still slanted here. Now, maybe you can see better. Cut out one of the stitched rectangles and then I cut this, cut a hole out of it that's the size that's using the stitched circles dies. And I used this card base that came in the kit and it has just kind of a watercolory image and I didn't want to cover the whole thing up because I thought it was pretty. So I was trying to use it as, and I saw it kind of as a plate. So when I cut the envelope out this size, that would obviously cover it all up. So I figured out what size the circle needed to be, which was practically the largest circle, I believe. Yeah, the largest plain circle in the circling dies, I believe was it. And then I've cut, don't take my word for it because I don't have them right here in front of me, I guess. I thought I had them in here. But I've got, I cut then two circles out, out of the pool party. This is actually out of the one of the card bases. I didn't use the back, so you don't want to throw those away. So I cut it out of that. Then I took a smaller circle and I put it right here and I used just my pool party marker and just kind of went around the outside edge of this circle. All right. So that's how I got kind of an indented looking, so it kind of looks a little bit more like a plate, hopefully. But that's all I did. I just kind of used a, used the fine tip in to start with to draw my circle, and then I just kind of used the brush tip. You could use a blender pen, you could use whatever you want, and make that little inside of the plate, okay? So you've got your rectangle of the stitch circle die with the hole cut out, that matches this bigger, well, I guess it matches this circle cut out of this paper, and then it's laid on top of this card base. So you can see I use the actual card base. And then before you glue that down, use the little splatter stamp that came in the kit to make the little dots. And I just stamped the outline stamp on the egg and the toast, used a blender pen to kind of give that a little more extra color there 
and then stamp the greetings on the little labels that came in the kit. So, pretty easy way to change this up. But then, after I did the one, I decided I like the second one better. And this is one we'll make if you, if we have time at the end, we'll go ahead and make one. But here is this one using that same card base. Just, hello, have an excellent, excellent day. Whoops, this way. Let me see if I'm going the right way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this egg has a little bit of the, I went in with the blends, used the Daffodil Delight, used some of the little sprinkles that came in the kit, the embellishments, but it is the same card base as this one. So you kind of, ha you'd have to choose which way you want to go on that because you only have three of these card bases. All right. Then I used the pool party ribbon the pool party sheer ribbon that is in the catalog. And the rest of this all came out of the kit. I just took the label that's in the kit. This this was a long skinny label that's kind of a crumb cake color. It's not, not exactly a crumb cake color, but close, they're calling it crumb cake. And then I used the Lovely Labels Pick a Punch to kind of shape the end of that crumb cake-ish label. This brown one was in the kit, the brown little scallops with the white dots in them. And if you run out of those, I figured out a way, a sneaky way to come up with a new scallop. And that is using our scalloped rectangles dies. You could just cut out a, rec a scalloped rectangle and then use, just chop that off wherever you want. If you want the stitching to show, you'd have to just kind of cut off a scallop and then cut in wherever you want. So you could do that in the brown or the red or whatever and have that same kind of look if you run out of the items in your kit. So that's a tip to stretch your kit, if that makes sense. And what do y'all think about this one? Do y'all like this card? I kind of like this one better than the other one, but up to y'all. And then I put a little wink of Stella on here. So we'll come back if y'all want to and make this one, but we'll move on. But you could use this little tip with the scalloped rectangle. You could make that replace your kit contents whenever you run out. Okie dokie. Now, here's another one with that I'm not going to make today, but I'm going to try to explain how I did it. I... It really, I only need one of them, so I hate to make another card because that, fortunately, that's <laughs> that's why we have our wonderful spouse is because you're there's only one that you want to grow mold together with. <laughs> How cute. These little punnies. I'm not usually the cutesy punny type, but it seems like they are kind of a, a hot, ticket right now. I've seen it on shirts. I've seen it on cards in stores. I've seen it, this kind of pun cards in several places. So I don't know how well you can tell this texture and all that. I'm going to show you how I did that. But this card base was, hang on, this one right here out of the kit. So I I didn't, again, I didn't want to cover this part up and it was in the center. So I kind of, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to cover the whole thing up. So I thought, how can I use, best use that and get the most out of this? So I cut a circle out using our layering circles dies again. I cut this, this big circle out of this cardstock right here. I'll take that off. So I just cut that out of this card base. All right. Then I took two other size circles. One is the largest scallop circle die, and then not the one not right next to it, but then one more step down. And I made this little frame. And this little scallop frame, the the uh, cardstock just present pre pretend this is the 
pretty one here. I just made it white so I could show you what I did. Laid that on top there. Then, of course, once you cut this out, you've got a hole in your card base. So if you're gonna use that card base, you gotta figure out a creative way to cover that hole up or use it. So what I did is, I used it. And I'm gonna show you, like I said, just a sec, I'm gonna show you how I use that Tasteful Textiles folder that's in the annual catalog, the embossing folder. And it's cut out of this side of the, well, it's cut out of this card base. So you can see this is the same card base. So the hole is cut out of it, and that piece of crumb cake is, let's see what size that is. It's three and seven eighths by five, by five and one eighth. So it kind of has an even border around it. I wanted the yellow to show and the white to show and then go to the crumb cake color. And again, I just stamped the little faces on the, bread that's in the kit, bread or toast, however you want to say it. But how cute is that with the guy saying, let's grow mold together, and the, the girl says, I love you. <laughs> I just thought that was fun. So I tried to make this look like moldy, and I think I succeeded. Moldy wheat bread, maybe. Some kind of moldy bread. Then on the inside, I put a smaller piece of crumb cake just because I want, you need to write on it, but it was just too plain and too stark with the white interior, I thought. And so this is a scrap I had left from an envelope. I just cut around the design that came from the liner of the envelope. Let me show you that, what, what I'm talking about. When you cut your envelope apart, that's on the inside. So I haven't cut that one up yet but this was a scrap. So I just put a white scrap in, and of course the basic white is a lot different from the paper pumpkin white. So that's why I thought it needed this crumb cake border to kind of make that all work together. So this is just the whole. I did the same green, granny apple green ring on the outside that I had on, and I've put another one on the inside right there. And then this spackle stamp and the heart stamp are both in the kit. So that comes with, in the, with the stamp set in the kit. So I thought that was fun. You could use it as a Valentine's card for a guy, I think. You don't have to have a pink and red Valentine's card. I just think this would be cute and add maybe a little heart. I didn't think about the a green heart on there before I finished up the card. But there you go. And I don't know if y'all have ever done this, but I'll show you how I got this look out of this paper, out of the crumb cake. I got this look. And that is using the Tasteful Textiles folder. All I did was open this up and really tap, 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 really, really, really get on here, everywhere. I can do that for it. Well, I'm I'm gonna go through the rest of the cards and then if we have time, I'll show, show you this, but that's all you do. Really, really, really soak those. Just cover it, cover it, cover it with ink on both sides. And then if you wanna use a blending brush, you could use one of the blending brushes, make sure you're getting down in all the detailed and then kind of go back over it again with the ink pad. And it, then you put the piece of paper inside there and run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine with the gray plate. So that's what you use for the 3D embossing. And I believe this is a 3D folder. And it always tells you on here 3D. If, if you need to use the gray plate, it'll be a 3D folder. So I'm not getting any comments about these cards. I don't know what that means. Hope y'all like them. I thought this was great fun. Okay, so that's how to use the layering circles dies for your layering with your scallops and, and all that. So I'll put this back and then if we can get make one, I'll give that a try for you. Okay, now we'll go to another option. 
And this, I saw this online. We're not gonna make this because this is really close to the sample I saw online. CreativeChelsea.com, I guess, is her, and it's Chelsea, C-H-E-L-S-E-Y, designed this card. The only thing I changed, she just had a rectangle here, and I, I actually cut a stitched rectangle and then I put this little guy with a holding up a sign and put a party hat on him. And there's a celebrate, go bananas, that kind of thing. Uh, all the greetings are in the kit. And then this, let's see, let's see where my little goodies are in my paper pumpkin kit. Let's see if I can get to that little piece. And it seems like they're not in here. So, hold on another moment. Let me see if I can find them in another box. It's got another card kit in it. <laughs> Since I have about six of them out. Well, still not seeing it. Hmm. Well, wherever that is in your kit... It has the hello and it has punch outs, kind of like this one. It's just has the, the red and the brown. Here we go. Finally found it. So y'all know what I'm talking about. You can see I just cut out, I had already used my little scallop pieces. So on this one, I didn't think about the, the stitch rectangle in time. So I just used the negative space here of one of these and I glued it was actually like this. So you can see this is where I got it. Just snipped that off, glued that underneath the greeting, the pool party greeting. So that's how I did that. So I changed, that's, it's changed up just a little bit from the way Creative Chelsea did it. But it, it's basically her, her card, her idea. So I just wanted to let y'all know, but I thought that was cute with the celebrate, go bananas. Could be somebody got a promotion, could be birthday could be whatever oh susan thanks I, I just now see your comment about the moldy bread <laughs> yeah that was fun to do okay so there's that one and you could make that uh, and creative chelsea shows that on one of her videos that where she does three cherries on one and three pieces of dancing toast or dancing toast and egg on the other one with coordinating greetings so i just i like this layout this is a four by four piece cut out of the envelope so you do have to use your envelopes to really do make the most out of your kit uh, using the in, the inside of the envelopes really makes a big difference you have a it spreads a lot farther that way and then you can just decorate the outside of your plain white envelope that you send it in because Stampin' Up! sells the regular whisper white or basic white envelopes and the clear envelopes in the catalog, the annual catalog. Alrighty. Now, I think I haven't shown you this one. And this was one I was thinking we would make today if we had time to, but we'll, we'll see where we are. But this could be the You Are Cherry Sweet. This is similar to the layout in the instruction sheet. See if you can tell right there. Because this cutout piece came from the kit, just like this. And I added this piece that is one of the corner pieces, or kind of a, uh, not really corner, but it, it comes from the side of the envelope. Let's see if I have one cut up properly so I can show you what. Well, this one isn't cut, but it would be the reverse side of this. Oh, here's one. Found one. Okay, when your envelope, this is, you cut your envelope apart, you're gonna have this piece. So I just cut it, fussy cut around that and used this piece on here. And then I used a poppy parade that I believe is three and a half by three and a half. If y'all are wanting to make one of these cards, I'm hoping we get to make one. Let's see. Yes, three and a half by three and a half square. 
And if you want it to look like this, right here, this is actually seeing the, the blue underneath it. So if you're gonna put a red square and put this on top, you're gonna have to die cut or punch a hole in here that is bigger than the opening in this blue checked piece. I use the gingham, the brand new gingham folder that is out of the mini catalog to give it some background, use the pool party, lay, uh, yeah, basic, a uh, basic eight and a half by five and a half card base and put the gingham, put it through the gingham folder. And then I'm gonna show you an option on this. If you forget or you decide not to, actually it was on the Zoom, I forgot to cut the piece out before I glued my, the blue piece to the red, so it was too late to do it. So, I'm gonna show you the optional one that I think I really like actually better than this one. And it is with the cherries, just with the vellum piece that's in the kit. This has the vellum also. I'm gonna show you that that look. So we're using this, this piece from the kit and the vellum piece for the kit and the cherries. I mean, basically everything, all the stacked stuff is from the kit. This is just from the envelope, and then this is extra. But you can do it either way. I did use blends on the cherries, and then I totally forgot to, I was gonna leave one undone, because the ones in your kit are lighter, they don't have this much definition, and they're not as bright. So I went with my light and dark Poppy Parade blends and colored those a little bit. Kind of went with the light almost everywhere. Tried to leave a little bit of white, and then colored one one edge. You can see with the darker blend. Okay, and it's easier if when you do your coloring of all of your pieces. If y'all haven't done your kit yet, if you go ahead and stamp with whatever stamp it is, say the banana, which is not on here, of course. But, let's see. And then I fussy cut around them too. So if you stamp with your early espresso little spot or your full ink pad, if you've got a full ink pad, stamping on them is a lot easier if you leave them in this little deal before you punch them out. So stamp everything first is what I would recommend in the early espresso and then go ahead and use your blends if you're gonna use those to give it a little more definition. And then I fussy cut around these because this had such a, a wide border. I went ahead and fussy cut out. So, there you go, there's that. And let's see, I think we've got one more to show you. I'll get these out of the way. But I'm gonna do one, if we if we get to do one today, I'm gonna do it with the little faces on there like we like the toast had on it earlier and do the cherries with the the sad faces and have the little saying call that says, I'm sorry, that's the pits, which is particularly funny since my name is Pitts, so I <laughs> thought that would be a cute card to do. But I just I didn't I kind of like the realistic looking cherries, and so I didn't put the faces on this one. And I intended to put them on this one and forgot and already put the Stampin' Dimensionals on. So we've got one more set to be able to do that with. One more cherry. And the great thing is, all of with all the die cuts gone out of your kit, you'll be able to just stamp more with the stamp set, and you can make as many of the cherries or toast or eggs or bananas that you want by stamping them and coloring them with your blends. Or you could use watercolor pencils, you could use whatever coloring tools that you have. Okay, last one is also inspired by one of Creative Chelsea's. I really liked her alternatives this month, so y'all should check her, check her site out also. This is this blue and white checked part is out is the punch out it's the negative space from the cherry card so all, all I did was punch this out 
and there you have it. That's how it, you get the little jig jaggedy lines there. And the yellow gingham card base is actually looks like, nope, doesn't look like that. I don't have one. I've cut mine all up. <laughs> That's where I got that extra piece of blue. The actual cardstock came with the blue back and a blue all around here. So what I did on these, and this is from, like I said, this is from Creative Chelsea, but I thought it was really cute and I changed up how, I changed it up quite a bit, but the layout is basically the same as what she had. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do this. And it's simply, hopefully this is, matches up. I had several, I cut, cut the other ones too. So you will, this is one piece of paper. Once you've cut the cardstock off, cut the blue part off that we had a while ago that we cut, cut the circle out of on that other one. Yeah, here's, see, because you can tell because it's white on the inside and our card base is not. So the card base was originally like this. And so you'll cut that in half at four and a quarter. And then if you can line this up at about one and three quarters. And if you'll look down here, see if I can get this close enough where y'all can see both sides here. <clears throat> the one and three quarter mark, I think I put it down on, so you can see one and three quarter goes all the way down to here. I put it about at that corner, not, not on the ruler, but I followed that line down, went, went to here, I believe. We'll see if that works up here. Uh, no, let me see. One and three quarter. Okay, that's about right. Okay. So you just kind of get it somewhere on that line and then try to get this one. And I, I, don't, I don't have a way to zoom my camera, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do that if, if it's possible. <laughs> but you, the edge of the trimmer is at, inch, is at an inch and a half. So you kind of have an imaginary line as where you think one and three quarters would be up here. And then have this side lined up on the one and three quarter line here. And then just, you'll just cut it in half and then you'll have two of these. So you can make two of these cards out of each of your card bases. Does that make sense? Okie dokie. Oh my gosh, there went that whole nail. Ah! Because I can't keep polish on them. I don't want to take two minutes to to <laughs> take care of my nails. Sorry. Just crafting instead of nailing. <laughs> okay. So there's that one. And I used just a regular five and a half by eight and a half piece of Daffodil Delight, fold that in half, score it with your bone folder. Let's see where that is when I have eight boxes of stuff out here. <laughs> kind of harder to find, but I would recommend using your bone folder on that. And then, um, let's see if we can find that. Here we go. Let me see what time it is. Oh, okay. We, we probably have time to make this one if we want or whichever one you want me to make. I'll just ask you all that. I'll explain this one. The This is crumb cake. Just stamped full-on strength crumb cake onto the card base. And you, you just have to do like the top half. About the top half because we're going to cover this bottom up. Then once you've stamped the bananas, you go on with the, you just glue your, the half of the yellow gingham on there. 
And then I took strips. I just cut strips out of the envelopes again. This is the one with that had the moldy bread kind of on the inside of one of them. So some of the pieces are white on it and some of them are this crumb cake color that, like I said, the envelopes are not, not really crumb cake, crumb cake. I'll show you the difference here if you don't have that both at home. But see, there's quite a bit of difference in the, the color itself. I don't think you can see as dramatic a difference on air as there is actual. <laughs> but it works. So you could use crumb cake, you could use craft paper, you could use the this part of the envelope, but that's all I did here was stick that on, just kind of overlap that, and then I overlap this on top. So you can make, I think it, it doesn't look as good with both of them to me, but if they're both exactly the same width. So I overlapped it, but you've got quite a, quite a bit of wiggle room. You can make it however, however tall or big you want it. And then I just cut a circle. This one is not that one, but that was from my plate, I think. So just cut a circle right here out of using your layering circles dies or whatever circle die you have or punch that's large enough to do that. Just make, make sure it's larger enough over the gingham part. And then that, I, I glued the, just glued this down and then glued the blue circle and then popped this circle up with dimensionals. And then this banana, you can tell I really worked on those quite a bit with the blends. You can see I used some crumb cake. I used basically light daffodil delight first and then used some of the dark Daffodil Delight. I used some crumb cake in there, and then I used some Granny Apple Green. You know how bananas have some of that green on them usually? So that's what is in here are the green, the Granny Apple Green, mostly light. If you use dark, I'd be really stingy with it because it, it gets pretty dark in a, in a hurry, and then you have a totally green banana, which would be fine, but you can see how the blends really give us the bananas a lot of depth. You can add Wink of Stella to that. If you want it to be cutesy to match the peel better soon, you could go ahead and put the face in the mustache or the face in the glasses, however you want to do it. Probably on my second one, that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and put the faces on them. So it works either way. But that's how I made that one. And then I would just do a piece of white on the inside. Just a, let's see. Nope. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I would just put a, let's see where it is, just a white piece on the inside. And then if you wanted to use more of your envelope pieces, you could do that here. Or you could just stamp a banana on the inside. Or if you really wanted to go all out, you could go ahead and stamp a banana and color it and put it on the inside. So totally up to you, but that would that would make the, the card work. Or you could do it at a slant, do it at the top or the, you know, that'd be cute. Kind of do that. But once you've glued this down to your card base, I would just glue, glue that like that and then come back and from the back trim, trim. Just make sure you're really careful here on this side because that's your fold. You cut your fold, you're going to cut into your card base. So pretty, pretty easy peasy on that one too, right? So those are my options. I'll put them out here again for you to see. We've got, and it seems like once I saw that, that Creative Chelsea did that go bananas, go, go bananas. I just I was hearing a song in my head. I don't know. Is there really a song that says go bananas, go, go bananas? Or did my brain just make that up? <laughs> and y'all see why I don't sing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see if we can get all these in the 
in the picture here. Which one is your favorite? Do y'all have a favorite out of these? Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, this one. Here's that, go bananas. Mix these up so the bananas aren't right together. And what style do y'all like? Do y'all like it more with the, the puns? Do you like the, the faces? Like, would you put an egg, put a face on your egg here and here and here, like these? Or do you like the more realistic looking fruits just done with the blends and no faces? What's y'all's preference? I would love to know. If you would leave that in the comments, that would be awesome. And I have some kits, some card kits that I can share with those of you who, not for these, well, I could for these. I could do like, if you don't have the yellow card base or something, y'all just put a comment and say which one you like. Susan likes the faces. I think they are cute. Eileen, what do you think? Anybody else who's watching the replay, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me, I'll cover this up, see if I can get all these in camera so I can have everything here together all the options so y'all can pick the one you like the most. I'd love to love to know which one your favorite is. And like I said, I'm not claiming design overall layout on those were creative Chelsea's, but the rest of them I came up with my own self. So I know y'all are creative too. Eileen, that's true. It really does depend on who you would send them to, whether or not the, the little faces are appropriate or not. Top left is Susan's favorite. This one right here. Well, how fun. How about you, Eileen? Do you have a, a favorite? I appreciate y'all tuning in and hope this has helped you with your alternatives. If you haven't made this kit, sorry y'all didn't get to come to the Zoom, but this is kind of what we did. I didn't even have this one done for the Zoom. But uh, Eileen likes the cherries, okay. And I think this would be cute with the, the pits here. Sorry, that's the pits or whatever with the sad faces would be really cute. And I think the peel better soon really would be cute with the, you could do a sad, <laughs> a sad banana on that. <laughs> okay, I do have a, something I wanted to show you that I just did that I am quite excited about that I th think would be helpful for y'all and for anybody who's watching and would like a couple of these labels, I'll be glad to share. But let me show you what I did. And I have these full files, but I'll be glad to put these out in a box for you if you if you need some. Hold on one second here, and I'll be right back. I wanna show you something. I'm trying to get some stuff organized where I can tell what's current, and because I do have more retired stuff than I should. I seem to be a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> I know some of y'all know who come to classes and all that over here. Y'all know about that. But I was tired of not being able to tell immediately which stamp sets were retired and which ones weren't. And then go back and think of what, what catalog did that come out of? Which, how recent is that? So I did these little bitty labels that will show up on the spine. And I have sheets of them. And I just printed the background color on the, the page, all right? And then like this, these are the regular size labels, the where you have 30 on a sheet. And I've got these all set up and now I've, I've got them saved on my computer so I could send you this file if you wanted to print your own. But I'm happy with y'all, those of y'all in town. If you wanna come by and pick some up, you just, 
tell me how many of these little stickers you need and I'll give you several because nobody needs really a whole sheet. I don't think any of us own that many stamps, but you could use this on your stamps, dies, um, embossing folders. You can put it on here too. I have been putting the name of the folder that comes in the little the little deal wrap around whatever you want to call it that's the kind of the label of the I don't see one handy but I cut this out of the deal that it comes in and cut this out so so I have that if I need that item code again and stick my name on there and now I'm going to start sticking which catalog it came out of so uh, I've got I've got them set up for the current annual catalog, the new, the mini catalog that just came out, and the celebration. And I just put January, February 22, like that, because we've been calling the, the catalogs January to June, annual catalog, that kind of thing. So I'm going to keep doing these so I can, I will put these, put some of these out for you if y'all are interested. But what do you think? Don't you think that's going to be helpful? To just be able to look on your shelf and see those little labels like that. Oh my gosh, I'm excited about it. So hope y'all are. Hope that's a nice benefit for you <laughs> for being one of my customers. I'm happy to share that. Okay, I will turn the camera around and say goodbye unless y'all have any questions or anything. It hasn't been quite an hour, but if you anybody needs to place an order, I've got my current host code up if y'all want to take a pic of that or what write it down or whatever if you need to know that and I look forward to seeing some of y'all at my customer appreciation cheers to the new year party that we're doing on Saturday night and I will be sending out some more details on that also want to remind you about the stamp -a stack class where we're going to be making these four cards that's coming up on Monday and I do, I will have some extra kits available that we can do it as a class to go. And I'm going to do a Zoom. I've had some people want to do that because this dang COVID is rearing its ugly head again or still or however you want to look at that. <laughs> so some people are really trying to be good and, and stay in. So these are the four cards and you'd make two of each. So I'll have some extra kits and I'm happy to do a Zoom if y'all just want to do it as a class to go instead of coming on Monday. I, but I do have several coming Monday. So there we go. There are those, just a reminder. And then our techniques class will be coming up on the 23rd. So I've got a beginner class. Let's look here at the calendar. So if y'all know anybody who might be interested in coming to a class I who has not stamped before and is getting out of the house and <laughs> still, I have a beginner class on Thursday, the 20th. And so I've got the one on the 17th is the stamp -a stack And then I've got the one on the 20th. And I believe I... I'm going to cancel my crafty open house on the 22nd. I just, whew, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera up while we're, while we're chit chatting here and kind of, I wish I could see y'all. I wish this was a zoom where I could see y'all too, but you can respond on the, <laughs> by typing in a little, your thoughts, but I really think I just need to be responsible and cancel that because instead of inviting a whole bunch of people I don't know into the house and expecting them to come into somebody's house that they don't know, I just think I might be better off to do it later. I don't know what y'all have heard, but with all the numbers spiking again, it just seems like that might be a good idea. So let's see. Uh, Switched over to my calendar, of course, and now I can't see the comments. <laughs> Here we go. I think, Eileen, they're probably going to be about the same as the class. I'm, I'm working on it at the moment. It's probably going to be around $30, but it might be less. And this is actually including the, the DSP. This is all the cardstock, all the 
the, the whole thing for eight cards in envelopes. So I think it's going to be around 30. I've just got to continue uh, figuring that and I will let you know. So it's going to be close to that for the, the kids. So I was going to include, I was going to do 35 and include a whole pack of the iridescent rhinestones, but then I was going to have to pay priority mail to get the stuff here. And I was afraid I still wouldn't get it in time. So <laughs> I may just use the embellishments that I have and not, not y'all wouldn't get a whole set. You'd just get enough to make your cards. So still, that's where I'm still working on debating about on what all I have enough of and everything, but somewhere around $30. It may be, um, yeah, somewhere around in that, in that neighborhood for eight, eight cards and envelopes. Okay. Well, thanks, Susan. I just, I guess that's the wise thing is to cancel that. I just hate to start off the year with canceling something that <laughs> I promised to have, but I just think that's going to be what I need to do. Okay, Eileen. So I didn't have you down to come on Monday already for the class. I'll just have to look. I was thinking you were one of my yes RSVPs, but if you'd rather do it via Zoom on a different night, then I will get that set up. Okay. Thanks for the, the help on the cancellation thing too. I appreciate that. Okay, Eileen. Well, just let me know for sure on the, the kit if you're because I think you were already counted in my yeses. I'll have to look at that again. But that's great. And I appreciate y'all tuning in. Yay. And let me hold these up. Maybe I'll get a, a good Facebook shot with some, some photos in it. But I hope y'all are doing well. I know we've got several on our in our little group who have had COVID and some who've had COVID again. Just crazy. I just kept thinking if everybody would just get the vaccine that we would be in a lot better shape. It might go away, but it doesn't seem that that's happening. We've got so many cards. We can't even get them all on the screen. <laughs> I'm just covered up here. Fun, fun. Thank you all again for tuning in. Glad you saw the fun cards. Susan, thanks, thanks very much and thanks for sharing. So, if Christy does Paper Pumpkin and wants to see these, I'm happy to share my info with her, too. All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful day, and thanks again for tuning in. Fun times ahead with everything we've got coming up. Y'all let me know what you're interested in. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.